say no. We had the Dutch say no. And then we had the Irish say no. You just don't get it, do you? No means no. Four hundred and ninety nine members of this House voted to ignore the Irish no vote and to continue with the treaty. What kind of a parliament is this? The voters of Europe can see the real face of this project. You are bullying, you are threatening, you are anti democratic, you're a complete shower. opportunity of uh, wishing the East European cities well in the coming of the very early skiing season uh, and snow and ice that's come there, what of course is indicative of the fact that, as independent science has now confirmed, that the globe is actually cooling and has been cooling since 2002, broadly flat since 1998. Uh, so, uh, we're all talking about something here which isn't happening. I've heard time and time again members here talk of CO2 as a pollutant. A pollutant is a life-giving natural gas. It gives me the impression that some of our members haven't had the benefit of a formal education. Isn't this really just about the state being able to get its hand in ordinary people's trouser pocket to steal yet more tax from them? Isn't this all about political control? Isn't all this about politics and big business? The whole thing's a sham. This bogus hypothesis, this ridiculous nonsense that man-made CO2 is causing global warming. Enough, please, before we damage irrevocably the global economy. In my English constituency this week, it was discovered that scientists from the University of East Anglia were allegedly manipulating data to try and prove man-made global warming. What a giveaway that was. It is clear now that the scientific consensus on man-made global warming is fast eroding. 30,000 skeptical scientists in the Manhattan Declaration, 600 scientists in a U.S. Senate report, even German scientists this year writing to the Chancellor Ang Angela Merkel. Socialist colleague over there talking about Greenland and you know the ice, the, the ice melting in Greenland. Well, you know the question I'd like to ask on this subject is why is Greenland called Greenland? Is it perhaps because Greenland was once green when the world was hotter? Well, it seems that the British people are onto this because a recent opinion poll in the Times newspaper clearly shows that the British people no longer believe in so-called man-made man global warming. The British people are very astute and they're clear that politicians have hijacked the environmentalist agenda. It's being cynically used to raise taxes, to exert control and now it's being used by the European Union to justify your own existence. Uh, you spoke about a huge awakening taking place. You spoke about the fact that if we just point out what illegitimate tyrants these people are, that they will fall. And you talk about people thanking you as if you can go out and do it alone. We have the moral high ground. We have the law on our side. We have history on our side. The problem is the bureaucracy has all the big banks and the big money uh, that, that want to set up their own private global corporate government uh, behind them. So, so speak specifically uh, uh, to the state of the world from your in-depth uh, position as a key member of the European Union Parliament from England and uh, tie that into Copenhagen and the open announcements by Al Gore, Gordon Brown, uh, Herman von Rupi and all of them openly saying this is world government through this environmentalist tyranny. Yeah, I mean, what they do, of course, and, and it's a well-established technique, um, they try and use any crisis. Now, whether it's a real crisis or whether it's a crisis of their invention, they use the crisis to extend the argument for uh, a, a, a loss of, of democracy, a loss of freedom of, of, of the individual, and the increase in global governance. And, and, and I can think of two very good examples of this. The first, of course, is the so-called war on terror. That, you know, we face a threat from al-Qaeda or whoever else it may be, um, and because of this, uh, we have to give the state more power over our lives. Um, and a lot of the 
judicial safeguards that we've enjoyed in Britain are now being thrown out of the window in the name on you know, the war on terror. And they're being used against non-terrorists. And they're being used, well, of course, I mean, this is what happens, isn't it? You know, this is what happens, is that, they, is that once, once governments, once police forces, once they have these extra powers, uh, they, of course, then use them in any way that they see fit. And I'm afraid that the result of this now nine-year, nearly, war on terror um, is that our loss of individual freedoms um, right across the Western world is simply enormous. It's as if the terrorists have won uh, because our own politicians have, 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 have used this as an excuse to get more power. Similarly, the same phenomenon is happening with global warming. And I mean, Al Gore, I mean, you know, God help us. Um, <laughs> I mean, here's a, yeah. man, here's a man who who lost the presidential election, um, who has now gone on to make many millions himself. And this shouldn't be forgotten, you know. He's made many millions himself out of this, this, this scaremongering, frankly. Absolute scaremongering over whether CO2 emissions, as he says, are inexorably leading to temperatures going up. Um, now, of course, the fact that we know the temperatures have not gone up, they've actually now gone down since, since 1998 or 2002, depending where you set the bar. Um, is irrelevant. But it, so now they've is, changed it to, to weather changes, climate, I any change is unnatural. Well, that's right. And, and you know, they, they were hooked on global warming. They say global warming less now because it's cooling. But, you know, any time there's a hurricane, any time there's a flood, any time anything happens, we're told, this is because of CO2 emissions. And we've got a situation where we're going to be signed up to treaties, which means that we can't change these agreements by how we vote at future elections. Meanwhile, the author of the key UN report on this, Sir Nicholas Stern, urges us to become vegetarian to stop cows farting. Maybe it is not just certain cows that have gone mad. We have as, as well climate change deniers, so to deny that uh, this is the case, and of course uh, they will raise their voice and deny that anything with meat production will have to do with climate uh, change or climate protection. Look, this is happy hour on the funny farm, isn't it? I mean, the fact of the matter is, is you've got global warming written there in front of you. You know, why was the globe actually warmer a thousand years ago during the medieval warm period in comparison to what it is now? Why was it warmer two thousand years ago during the Roman warm period when we were producing wine as far north as Scotland? I mean, come on, the globe hasn't warmed for the past ten years. It's a scientific fact, you know, and just to take one thing up with you, Mr. Chairman, at the start, you said that people who are climate change skeptics are deniers. Now, I'm sorry, you, being German and all, I'm sure you know the connotations that the term denier has, and I think you should call the skeptics, actually, because we are. And as a bit of a protest, we in the UK Independence Party are holding a barbecue out on Place Lux. You're all invited. It's called All You Need Is Meat, and we'll be celebrating meat at 12 o'clock today. Enjoy your food, and I hope it has no consequences for you. Yeah. I'm deeply concerned with the WTO talks starting this week. I worry about a drift towards green tariffs justified on the basis of such spurious claims. These new tariffs are just barriers to trade. They punish the poor and have no justification whatsoever. This is just Enviro imperialism. Come Thank you. Ende, I, I mean, we've just, I mean, just give an example of how mad this is. We've just seen Britain's oldest steelworks up at a place called Middlesbrough in the northeast of England. That steelworks announced last week that it's closing down. In doing so, the parent company, an, a, an Indian firm called Tata, will be given £600 million worth of carbon credits, right, for closing down that, for closing down that plant. And then what will happen is all of that production will shift across to India, who, of course, have no intention of lifting to any of this stuff. I mean, in, our, in, in the name, in the name of, of fighting against carbon emissions, we're actually literally exporting jobs from our country to, to countries like India, which clearly makes no sense at all. The other big response in Europe to this is we are building tens of 
thousands of these ludicrous windmills, yeah, right across Europe, and we're told this is wonderful, this will be a wonderful source of renewable energy. Now, I'm not against the concept of renewable energy, but I'll tell you this. In Germany, they built 19,000 wind turbines, but not a single coal, oil, or gas-fired power station has closed down, because in the depth of winter, when a big, when a big anti-cyclone sits over northern Europe, not a single one of those 19,000 wind turbines moves around and produces any electricity. Even if cutting carbon emissions was vital to the environment, the way we're going about it is mad, bad and wrong.